Hello and welcome to this Android Studio and Kotlin tutorial. I'm Cal and today we're going to be building a timer that continues to count even if the app is closed and then reopened. We're going to store three variables in shared preferences, uh, start time as well as stop time and whether or not the timer is counting. So based off those three variables we can then deduct what the timer should be at uh, regardless of whether or not the app has been closed or not. That's why we're going to use shared preferences. So if that sounds good, let's get started. A new Android Studio project. Uh, empty activity, we're going to call this one persistent timer app and our programming language is Kotlin. First things first, we're going to head into the build gradle and enable view binding. So just typing build features and then view binding is true. So with those changes made now, we're just going to hit sync and then make a start on our layout. So I'm just going to hit split and give ourselves a little bit more room. We're going to change the parent layout to a linear layout as well as setting the orientation to vertical. We're going to set the text to be 000, so just our pretty standard time string. I'm going to extract this string resource and call it placeholder time. We're going to remove the constraint layout constraints and give our text view a width of match parent. Give a little bit of padding, so 10 dp. Our text color is going to be black as well as setting our text alignment to center and our text size, we're just going to make that a little bit bigger, so 60 sp. So below that, we're going to add in a constraint layout and we're just going to give it a width of match parent and a height of wrap content, padding 10 dp. And then inside our constraint layout, we're going to put our two buttons. So we're going to have a start button and a reset button. So the first button, we're just going to have width and height wrap content. We're going to call this one our reset button. So just giving an ID, our text is going to be reset and we're going to extract that string resource. So just reset. And then with our constraint layout, I'm actually just going to click in left, top and bottom of our reset button. And then I'm going to copy and paste down that button, remove the constraint start to start of and add end to end of. And we're going to change the text of the first button to start. So this is going to be our start stop button and just changing the ID to start button, extracting that string resource. And then we're going to add in the constraint end of our reset button, as well as adding the constraint end to start of our start button. So that's just going to evenly space our two buttons in our constraint layout. So if you've seen any of my previous timer tutorials, the layout is going to look very similar. Cool. So next we're going to create a new Kotlin file and we're going to call this class data helper and it's going to manage all of our shared preferences data. So we're going to store a start time, a stop time and whether or not the timer is counting. First, we're going to create a class which receives context. We're going to declare a private variable calling it shared preferences, which is equal to our context dot get shared preferences. And then we just need to create a companion object. This companion object is just going to store a couple of constant strings for us. So we're going to create one calling it preferences. We're going to need one for our start time as well as our stop time, as well as whether or not the timer is counting. And so it really doesn't matter what these strings are. We outline them in this companion object so that it's consistent wherever we use them. And now that we have our static preferences string, we can pass that into our get shared preferences. We're also going to give our get shared preferences context mode private. Below that, we're going to create another variable calling at date format. And this is just going to be a simple date format. And it's going to display month, day, year, hours, minutes, seconds. And the locale is going to be the default. We're going to create another variable calling it time accounting, which is initially equal to false. We're going to create a start time variable, which is of date, which can be null. We're also going to initialize our start time to be null. And then we're just going to duplicate that line and calling it stop time. So take note that these three variables we just created are all private variables and therefore cannot be accessed outside of our data helper class. So that's where we're going to create a function which just simply returns each one of those variables. And when we declare a function in Kotlin and we don't say whether or not it's a private function, it's assumed that it's public and therefore it can be accessed outside of our data helper class. The reason why we're going to return these variables this way is because when we set our start time, not only are we going to save it locally, we're also going to save it in shared preferences. So in our set start time function, which is going to receive a date, we're going to set our start time equal to our date. And then we're going to say with shared preferences edit, we're going to declare a variable calling it string date, which is equal to if our date is equal to null, return null. Otherwise, we're going to use our date formatter to format the date into a string. And then we're going to say put string and we're going to give it our start time key. So the key that we're going to put the string in shared preferences as well as the string that we want to save, which is our string date. And then we just need to call apply. And then we're going to copy and paste down that function and just do the same thing for our stop time. So we're saving our stop time to our stop time key as well as giving it our new stop time date. We're going to copy and paste that function one more time and rename it to time accounting. Our time accounting is obviously going to receive a Boolean and we're just going to set it locally first. 
And then we're going to say instead of put string, we're going to say put boolean and giving it our counting key as well as our value. Cool. And the final thing left to do is to load our local values back from shared preferences when our data helper is created. So we're just going to create a constructor basically. So typing init, I'm going to say time accounting is equal to shared preferences get boolean. We're going to give it our counting key and the default value is false. We're going to say value of our start string is equal to our shared preferences get string and we're going to give it our stop time key which actually should be our start time key. Uh, the default value is going to be null and we're going to say if our string is not equal to null set our start time equal to our date format pass a string. So turn the string into a date and then give it to our start time and we're just going to do the same thing for the stop time except using the stop time key and just fixing up the key so we've got our start time key and our stop time key in the right place. Cool, so we're ready to head into our main activity now. We're just going to start by creating a variable calling it binding, which is about our activity main binding. We're just going to say binding is equal to our activity main binding inflate, giving it layout inflator, and then setting our content view with our bindings root. Then we're going to create another later init variable of our data helper, which we just created, and we're going to initialize that. Remember it needed context, so we're just going to give it application context. And then we're going to create another variable. We're just going to call this one timer, which is equal to uh, the class timer. Next, we're going to create a on click listener for our start button. So just saying set on click listener for our start button. Uh, we're going to create a function calling it start stop action, and we're going to create that below. We're also going to create a on click listener for our reset button, uh, just calling this one reset action. For our reset action, we're going to set our data helper. We're going to set the stop time to null as well as the start time to null. We're also going to create a function just calling it stop timer and then below that we're going to say our text view which we haven't actually given our text view an id so we're just going to give it an id of time text view and then we're going to set our time text view text equal to we're going to create a function which receives a number and turns it into a string that's formatted in our time format. So I'm going to call this uh, time string. Actually, I'm going to change it to time string from long, which receives milliseconds and returns a string. So in order to turn milliseconds into a time string, um, don't ask me how the maths works exactly. I basically got this off the web. Um, but yeah, basically what we're doing is given a long, which is milliseconds, we're going to get the seconds, minutes and hours component based on the maths. And I actually got this wrong. So please refer to the screenshot in the top right hand corner as to what the function should actually look like. And then with those three components, we're going to make a time string out of it. So we're just going to pass through the hours, minutes, seconds as a long. And then we're going to say string format uh, percentage sign 02D plus the little dots uh, three times, and then just passing through our three different variables, so hours, minutes, and seconds. Cool, so let's head back up and fill in a bit more of our functions. For our stop timer, we're just gonna set our timer counting equal to false, as well as setting our start button text equal to uh, stop, and just extracting that string resource, uh, just naming it stop. And actually, I think we need to call this start. So if we are stopping the timer, we need to set the timer to start, uh, it seems like I've got a bit of an error here, so I'm just going to click through and it turns out I didn't do our enable view bindings correctly. So that actually needs to be view binding equal to true. Um, so that's all looking good now. Um, so yeah, we're going to create another function calling it start timer, which just sets the time accounting equal to true. And our start stop button text equal to stop. Cool, so let's fill in our start stop action now. We're going to say if our timer is counting is equal to true, we're going to set our data helper stop time equal to a new date, so the exact moment that that happens, as well as calling our stop timer. Otherwise, our timer is not counting and we need to start it. If our stop time is not equal to null, then we're gonna set our start time equal to a function which we're gonna create, calling it calculate restart time, which I'm gonna come back to. And below our setting our start time, we're gonna set our stop time back to null. Otherwise, uh, we don't have a stop time, so we're just going to set our start time equal to a new date, and then we're just going to call our start timer in both instances. So with our calculate restart time function, this is when the user has started the timer and then stopped the timer and then started again. We need to calculate the difference between the times. So we're going to say difference is equal to our start time minus our stop time, and then we're going to return date, current time, plus the difference. So we're saying start time minus stop time, add that to the current time, and that's what our timer should be at. 
Cool, so scrolling back up to our onCreate function, we need to put our timer back into the state that the user left it. So we're gonna say if our data helper timer counting is equal to true, we're gonna start our timer. Otherwise, we're gonna stop our timer. And then below our stop timer, we're gonna say if our start time is not equal to null and our stop time is not equal to null, meaning that they both have values, we're gonna say another variable calling it time, which is equal to the current time, minus calculate restart time time. So that's using the start and stop time. And then we're gonna set our time text view text equal to our function where we turn our long into a time string. We're gonna set that to our time text view. The final thing left to do is use our timer here to just constantly be refreshing the view. So we're gonna say timer schedule at fixed rate. We're gonna create a time task. Uh, our delay is gonna be zero and we're gonna check every half of a second. So every 500 milliseconds. We're gonna create a private inner class of type time task, which is of type timer task. So that's our time task above. We're gonna override the run function. And we're just gonna say if our timer is counting, we just wanna get the current time and then minus the start time from it. And then we're gonna set our time text view text. We're gonna get the time that we just calculated and turn it into our time string. Cool, so let's build and run this and see if we have a persistent timer working. And for this one, I'm just going to create a shortcut to the app we just created. So we're just gonna start the timer. And then we can stop it like normal. And then I'm gonna close the app. And when we return, we should still be on nine seconds which we are, and then I'm gonna start the timer again. So the timer is gonna count again, and then I'm gonna close the app once more. And so it was on 19 seconds when we left it, and when we return, it's on 24. So it looks like it's kept counting. Cool, so that's how you create a persistent timer app in Android Studio. If you enjoyed the tutorial, give it a like. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one.